There's a door behind the time. toilet. Hey guys, welcome to Tokyo Creative Play. I am your host Emma and today I'm here with Paris. Hey guys. So we are kind of, maybe the thing that we're most well known for is we've both done videos on tiny Japanese apartments or yes. dorm rooms or, mm -hmm. yeah, we've both stayed in different kinds of Japanese accommodation and made videos on it. So that's how you might know us. Um, so we've had a bit of experience with Japanese accommodation and housing. Mm -hmm. And over time, uh, if you lived here for a while, you might also know that finding apartments here is quite difficult. There are certain yeah. things that get in the way. Um, some places don't accept foreigners. Mm -hmm. uh, rent can be high in some places. There's yeah. different problems. But the thing that we're going to be doing today is we're going to be looking at different layouts of Japanese apartments or housing and trying to figure out what the problem is, what is wrong with it. And when we figure it out, we have to press the buzzer. It is a competition, so we have to figure it out fast and we'll let you guys know. And throughout the way, you're going to find out some tips and tricks on how to find good housing in Japan. So I'm, I'm going to be Jeff. Let's get started. <laughs> So we're looking at a layout. If you are looking for a house in Japan, this is the kind of layout that you will see. There's different things that mean different things. <laughs> different things that mean different things. Like um, if you find an apartment, it'll be like a one LDK, one R, which means like one R is like one room. One LDK is like a living room, a dining kitchen. And then the, n the number means how many other rooms there are in the house. So the one that we're looking at, all right. It says LDK 12. Which means living room, dining room, kitchen. Oh wait, what is that? This I don't know what that kanji. I don't know what the kanji is yeah, it's in... underneath the closet. Oh, okay. There is a random door in the middle of the oh, house that I just see leads it. to nowhere. I see. Like it. I feel like I. Oh <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just there's no purpose for that door. It's in the middle of the the living dining kitchen area, uh, and it, it, there's no point to it because mm. it's just an open space. If so it, if it would have been a hallway then. Yeah, yeah, mm. but unfortunately. <laughs> and it has a nice veranda. So if you just ignore the door, this is quite a nice place, I think. Okay, my tip number one for Japanese housing is definitely look a lot before you choose a place. There are so many websites out there that can help you. Uh, and a lot of them cater especially towards foreigners and are English friendly as well. So definitely there's like Gaijin Pot. Uh, and also know what kind of house you're looking for, whether you're looking for an apartment for yourself or a share house, or if you're sharing with friends, definitely look at all the options that you can before you choose one and pick a couple of options as well just in case one of them isn't okay with foreigners. <laughs> Next one. All right there's a tatami room and a LDK area. Hmm. Oh, I'm not good at this. I can't tell. Oh. Hold on. Wait is this a bedroom? This is just the tatami room so you can use it as a bedroom if you want. I don't know oh, that's kanji. Okay, I'll different, just guess. Um, is there like there's no closet in the bedroom? Like it's opening in the living room? No? Hmm. Is there no way to get to the stairs? <laughs> <laughs> there's stairs what? right here. And there's no there's no indication that there are multiple floors. It's just got a staircase that is leading up from Nothing. from where? Imagine if you didn't notice that and you moved in mm. and suddenly you just find these mysterious stairs. That'd be so freaky. Okay, so my second tip when looking for houses in Japan is definitely look at all of the added costs to each apartment because there's going to be the amount that you pay every month, which is usually going to look pretty good because housing in Japan is actually quite cheap, especially compared to Australia. Yeah. Um, but the thing that costs a lot is the move-in price. So there's going to be things like security costs, a month's deposit, and then key money, gift money, guarantor money. They'll just mm -hmm. keep adding up more and more and more. And so I know a friend who moved in and their rent was like $2,000 a month. And the move-in cost was about uh, $10,000. <gasps> Oh wow, yeah. that's so expensive. Uh, if you're paying like $700 a month, mm. you might have to pay maybe $2,000 to move yeah. around it, that. It depends if it's like an apartment or a share house, that, but yeah. it should tell you how much the moving fee is, like the contracting fee. So mine was only around 500, oh, so that's good. because it's a share house, but yeah. apartments are a lot more expensive. Yeah, and I, originally when I came here, that really small apartment, that was kind of a, a foreigner friendly mm -hmm. month to month contract, um, all Wi-Fi and everything all utilities included. So I didn't have to pay, uh, I think I just had to pay a deposit for that and then I got oh. the deposit back at the end. So oh, I didn't wow. have to pay anything up front, which was great, except for the fact that it was, you know, the, the eight square meter apartment, oh, really which was really small. <laughs> so it was all good except for the actual size. Also be careful if you have a pet, sometimes it can double or there is always at least gonna be an extra cost for the pet itself. Mm. Uh, so just be careful with that. I searched from, when I lived in my tiny apartment, I searched for a new apartment for five months. 
Oh because I had a visa Whoa. situation. Anybody in Australia, really quick. I have a video where I talk about things you have to do with the working holiday visa in Australia. If you're trying to get an apartment in Japan, <laughs> you can check it out if you want. <laughs> I was on the working holiday visa from Australia, which is only a six month visa. You can renew it twice, so you can be here for a year and a half. Okay. Because it says six months, you can't get a housing contract because they only allow you to have housing contracts for one year or, um. or more. So many places wouldn't give me a house. That's how I ended up in the eight square meter apartment. And how long was that? 11 months. 11 months. I was there okay. for 11 months and I went insane. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy, God. Oh my God. All right, so this one, there's two tatami rooms. It's, it's the bath in the bottom left-hand corner and the toilet is up in the left. So oh, the bath man. is separate from the toilet and it, the bath is in the kitchen. Oh, <laughs> so I'm sorry. These are real apartments in Japan. You have to go all the way through the kitchen just to take a shower or to take a bath. I don't That's know. That's so weird. There's not even a closet that you can put box yeah. stuff in. Anywhere. And it's like open. Yeah, there's no That's door. So awkward. What if someone is like in the kitchen? Yeah, yeah. You have to put like a curtain. And it would here. be so cold in the winter. There'd be nothing That's protecting such, you from yeah, all this cold problem. space. It's <laughs> such a terrible design plan. Yeah. So um, one thing we should talk about is the tatami because this has a two rooms of tatami. Mm. Um, in Japan, also a lot of the time they measure the room size by tatami mats. Six tatami mat sized room. Um, but tatami, I personally don't think I could have a house with tatami because. You know, the purpose of the room is to have maybe a futon or mm. like a floor table. You gotta be really careful with yeah, tatami. You can't spill stuff on it. Tell me your housing mm. tip. My housing tip, I think for me, the most important thing is space. Mm. So it's knowing the conversions of the space. So when I was looking at rooms, um, I was looking at eight meter rooms, nine meter rooms and 10 meter rooms. But in America, we go by feet. So oh. maybe like 13 feet by 10 feet is like a normal room size. But when I saw eight meters squared, I was like, I don't know what that means. So I had to do the conversions and I got a room that's actually 12.25 meters. And that's about like 130 square feet. That's how oh, we usually, that's good. yeah, it's, a, it's yeah. a really nice size room. So I think just finding out what's most important to you about the space you're gonna move into. Like, do you want a big room or do you want a lot of lights? Do you want like mm. windows? So I think you should think about what's most important and then kind of make a list and have the things you want the most at the top and then whatever you don't care about as much, have that towards the bottom, like pros and cons. Yeah. And then decide on your room. It's good to understand that something that might be really normal in your country it might be really like like sunlight you know it's kind of normal for houses in yeah. i guess america and australia mm -hmm. to have a lot of sunlight but i didn't realize that here that you really need to check like what yeah. way your your room is facing what um if there's a building directly opposite you that's going to yeah, stop all the light the buildings are really close sometimes yeah so it's like even if you're facing a certain direction you might not get light so it's best if you can definitely like visit the place yes. or at least just yeah. see pictures of the place in the daytime and that way you can like have an idea of what it's going to be like <laughs> what? Do you think it's that? Oh, yes, it's gotta be. What the, what the hell is this? <laughs> okay, so first thing I noticed is that there's a toilet in the very middle of the apartment, and then there's four doors. There's four doors. Like there's literally four doors, and it's just the toilet. So it's like anyone could enter. There's a door behind at any the time. toilet. That's so awkward. Yeah, right behind the toilet, both sides of the toilet, and right in front. So you'd have to lock four doors if you wanted to use the bathroom. And I don't know if you forgot to lock one. What? I mean, I don't know what's gonna happen. Okay. So we got the gank on. Two doors. <laughs> oh, sorry. It's okay. How I do know. you get to the veranda? That, yeah. <laughs> yeah, what? <laughs> this is the first thing I saw. There's, you... Yeah, there's no, there's no door do you have to, to the veranda. Hop over the... You have to climb through the window for the kitchen. Because that's a kitchen, so yeah, it's like yeah. you have to hop over the kitchen to get outside. Yeah. So the last tip, we're just going to tell you generally how to find an apartment as a foreigner coming mm -hmm. to Japan. So there's also options to do share houses. There's Okao, Sakura House, and Social Apartments. And all of them are really awesome because they have like different features such as maybe a gym, a theater, and then also the people within the share house are all very talkative. So it's a really good way to make friends if it's your first time moving to Japan. And right now I live in a share house too. And it's so nice. Like our kitchen is huge. My bedroom's really huge. And then also the bathrooms and everything are really big. And it came furnished as well. If you're moving here for a long time, but you don't want to spend as much money like on furniture and stuff like that, I think it's really beneficial to live in a share house. Okay, well, the end scores. I'm so sorry, Paris. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just, I just went for it. I got so competitive. I'm used to it now. Oh no. <laughs> People get away with making houses like this. 
so just a bathroom. The Game Con is so tiny. Yeah. Why is the bathroom <laughs> in the very center of the house? That's so awkward. <laughs> that's like the. That's I'm, so weird. There's so much stuff happening on one side. This. Has so been, that's the Game. That's, that's the Game Con. I think that's so. It's okay. Well, thanks for coming, and we'll see you again soon. Bye. Bye. All right, guys. So I'm at the train station and literally everyone has been staring at me so thank you emma and yeah get prepared for next time because i'm gonna get you back